In this problem, we're finding the volume of this sphere right here. And we're given this one measurement. And this is the radius, right? You can see that it's a line coming from the center of the sphere to the outer edge. And that is the radius of the sphere. Also, we should just to have as a tool the height of the sphere. Well, the height is going to be the diameter of the sphere, which is going to be twice the radius. So the height of the sphere right, is 16 centimeters, double eight. So how do we find the volume of the shape? Well, what I often like to do is to relate it to a cylinder. So if I was to draw a cylinder of the same height right, as the sphere, and you can imagine that the sphere would fit almost perfectly inside the cylinder. This is my sketch of a cylinder. It's not coming out too good, but imagine that the sphere is actually touching the bottom of the cylinder. It's fitting snugly. Well, if I can find the volume of this cylinder, right, and then take that volume of the cylinder and multiply that by two-thirds, right, times two-thirds, that will equal the volume of a sphere, as long as the sphere has the same height and width as a cylinder. Right? If I was to take this sphere and, and empty out all of its contents into the cylinder, it would fill it up two-thirds of the way. So I'm using that strategy, which is to find the volume of the cylinder and take two-thirds of that. So how do I find the volume of the cylinder? Well, the height we have, right? the radius we have, so all we do now is plug this formula in for the volume of a cylinder, which is pi times the radius squared times height. So radius squared is 64, right, 8 times 8, and times the height, 16, and that's our volume of our cylinder. We're going to take that number and multiply it by 2 thirds to get the volume of our sphere. So as we work through this, we're going to multiply 64 by 14, and we're going to leave this thing in terms of pi. So what is 64 times 16? 1,024, right? So, so here we're saying, well, the volume of the cylinder is 1,024 times pi. But we're multiplying that by 2 thirds. So let's keep going, right? We have 1,024 pi times 2 thirds. And this will get the volume of the sphere. Okay, well, to find 2 thirds, I take my number, divide it by 3. So 1,024, I'm going to leave pi out of this for now. Divided by 3 gives me this number, 341 and a third, and double that to get 2 thirds. And we get 682 and 2 thirds, right, or 0.6 repeating, pi cubic centimeters, because we're finding out how many cubes are in the shape for the volume. And that's, that's the volume of the, of the cylinder times 2 thirds, so that's the volume of, right, of the sphere. So that's one way to find it. Another way, just a, a rearrangement of this whole process, is to simplify this formula by saying, okay, we're taking 2 thirds times the volume of a cylinder. Well, if the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, and the volume is being multiplied by 2 thirds, right? Well, how can we simplify this? Well, a cylinder that's around a sphere is special because the height, right, equals two radiuses. If you think about the height being a diameter, it's built from one, two radiuses, or radii, I guess. So we can rewrite this formula as pi r squared times 2r. All I'm doing is substituting out the h and putting in a two radius right there, because that, that's the same thing. Remember, we're multiplying all this by two-thirds. So here, what I'm going to do is multiply like terms, r times r squared. I get r cubed. 2 times 2 thirds, I get 4 thirds, and we still have our pi there, so it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this other formula is just, is just a simplification of this process, although it might feel a little bit less intuitive. Let's, let's work with this one to see what happens. So we take 4 thirds of r cubed. r cubed is 8 times 8 times 8, which is 512. We're going to multiply 512 by pi and then multiply it by 4 thirds. But again, I want to leave it in terms of pi, just as I did here, because I want to compare these two. So I take 512, and I'm going to find 1 third by dividing by 3. It gives me 170 and 2 thirds. And then multiply it by 4, because I have 4 thirds here. And I get the same number. I don't know if you saw that, but 
it says 682 and 2 thirds, or 0.6 repeating, pi cubic centimeters. So when you're finding the volume of a sphere, you have certainly have both of these approaches. Pick the one that really helps you. Thanks.